So I've just moved to a new apartment and thus set up a whole new home studio. And I'm currently working on a session and I thought, why not turn on the cameras, check out my angles and my lighting and bring you guys in on the session. And if you'd like to see a video on my new home studio setup, let me know down in the comment section below and give this video a thumbs up. But as always, you can find links to all of the gear used in this video down in the description below. If you're new to this channel, my name is Stefan and I make videos about music production, of course. But we delve into practical things like music theory, sound selection and different music production techniques to help you in your music production journey. Cool, with that being said, let's jump in to the session. Okay, so I got this track started with a guitar loop that I picked up from Splice, and it's a very simple guitar loop that stays around the same notes for the full four bars. If you look at the waveform, you can see it's pretty similar throughout. And let's have a listen. Using a simple guitar loop like this gives us freedom. Because it's playing the same notes throughout the whole of the four bars, we're able to play an array of different chord progressions over the top. We're not bound by any chords here, and we're not bound by the guitar playing different bass notes. It literally has one bass note that it plays every four beats. That gives us a lot of freedom, especially if we decide to roll off some of that bass. It allows us to put in our own bass notes, and that's what we're gonna do now. So before I had the cameras rolling, I decided to load up a Scarby pre-bass. The Scarby pre-bass is based on a P-bass, a precision bass. And this particular emulation I really love and have been using for years. But in addition to this, I've added a preset from Guitar Rig. And we'll speak a bit more about Guitar Rig in a moment. For now, let's lay down our bass. Oh, that sounds dope. Cool, so I brought up the keyboard on contact just so you could see um, what I was doing there with the modulation wheel. This was allowing me to bend the notes of the bass, which adds so much flavor to the bass line. All right, so I think that's enough for the verse. Let's take a moment to create an arrangement for the chorus. So as I'm building my chorus here, I think it's important for me to keep the guitar loop going throughout the whole track. This is the motif. This is the glue that binds each element together, each section of the song together. And it's the part that most people will recognize and remember and potentially even hum other than the lyrics of the song. So. We have that in our chorus now, but what I want to do is do a little breakdown. So I've dropped out some elements here with the hi-hats and the percussion, and I have the guitar loop here, but now I want to introduce some chords. Now, if you remember what I said before with the guitar loop, because it's so simple, we have the freedom to play a ton of chord progressions over the top. So I'm going to pull up a keyboard now. I'm going to go for a Yamaha DX7 emulation. It's a sound that's used heavily in R&B, and we're going to try some chord progressions over the top to see what fits best. Cool, so I think that sounds really good. I might make a few changes, um, mainly taking out the bass notes because I'm gonna play the bass notes with the bass guitar. So that's another quick tip. You don't always need to put the bass notes in your 
piano parts or your keyboard parts, especially if the bass player is going to play those exact same notes. EQ is your friend, however, it's much better to just play the correct notes in the first place. And with that comes less mixing because you're playing each instrument where they're supposed to be. Cool, <laughs> that sounds cool. The guitar lick, I'm not too sure about it. Mm. I think if we place a crash um, just after it, when the kick and snare come back in, then it will sound a lot better and it will be more impactful. But even still, I'm not too sure. But let's do that anyway and, and see how it sounds. Alright, so yeah, that sounds pretty cool. It could do with some um, quantizing in certain parts, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. But let's not rest on our laurels, there's more to be had. Let's add in some more guitar. This is my new baby, Stella. No, I'm kidding, I haven't got a name for her yet. But this was actually a Christmas gift, and I literally now have no excuse but to learn. I actually started learning when I was 16 and I stopped. And it's one of my biggest regrets in life. But as they say, the best time to start is now because in another 10 years time, I could be in the exact same position saying, I wish I just started. Where would I be now if I had started 10 years ago? So I say that to say this, I'm not the best guitar player. I'm not average. I'm not even mediocre. But even if you're not good enough to play guitar on your own tracks, you can still use the guitar to come up with lines because as I've said in many videos, the format of an instrument will cause you to create different things. I like to start on the guitar now and chords, chords are fine. Chords, I can play chords all day long. That's fine. But when it comes to lines and sounding clean, not so much. So I like to start with the guitar to come up with my lines and then I will move over to a guitar emulation like the Session Guitarist from Native Instruments. Um, but anyway, let's tune this up and let's try and record something. And if it doesn't sound good enough, we'll move over to our guitar emulation. So those are the easy guitar parts out of the way. And once again, for these guitar parts, I'm using Guitar Rig. And I have to say, Guitar Rig is one of my favorite plugins now. Not just for guitar, for anything, because it has so much to offer. It has so many racks, racks on 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 racks. Now I've just got a guitar line that I would like to, to play in also. So the line's supposed to go. but I can't, I just can't seem to play it cleanly um, in real time. So I'm gonna move on to the session guitarist and play it on the keyboard um, because yeah, I'm getting fed up now. Cool, so that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comment section below and give this video a thumbs up. It does wonders for the channel. You know how YouTube is these days. So I've been Stefan and as always, happy beat making.